coronavirus, there's a lot students can, can do. Uh, we have seen students from outside countries do a couple of things. Mm -hmm. For example, in, in, uh, recently there was a call in, in the UK. Uh, they were calling for volunteers mm -hmm. and they realized a very massive number of students who were willing actually to volunteer. They volunteering in doing deliveries, calling people who are needy, calling people who, 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 who calling people who, who could be isolated somewhere and they don't have somebody to talk to. So the role of students is really very, very fundamental in this and that's why we come in. That's mm -hmm. why we come in. Okay, so how do we get against um uh, against quack volunteers because that's that's also there you come in as volunteers and all the things but then how do we get against uh, those who are not doing the right things in this time because remember everybody is grappling and um if if anybody's getting any support or any help from anywhere they'll just appreciate it uh, without them actually assessing whether they're getting the right uh, uh, stuff or not how do we get against that uh, patrick uh, thank you so much for that question. That's a very, very fundamental question. I, I would say that uh, one thing in this pandemic and in this coronavirus is we have to trust sometimes the will of the human spirit. And because of that, uh, mm -hmm. I would say that uh, the best way of guarding, especially for professional volunteering, because there is this other volunteering people can give, mm -hmm. but for professional volunteering, sometimes you need to authenticate, you need mm -hmm. to authenticate and, and, and see that somebody who is offering, uh, for example, a remote medical consultation, mm -hmm. does he have the qualifications to do it? Mm -hmm. So it means if there is a group of people offering this volunteering, a group of people trying to bring these volunteers together, mm -hmm. it is their mandate to try to check, mm -hmm. to try to do background checks and see, does this person have a national ID? Does it really reflect on this person? Uh, does this person have a license? Mm -hmm. Perhaps can even go an extra step to consult with, because we, for our case here in Uganda, we have we have councils mm -hmm. that uh, this, this, the different professionals they, they register to. Mm -hmm. You can take an extra mile uh, <coughs> to, to contact them and see this person who is really willing to volunteer, does he have the qualifications to? How do you think service? about coming into this as volunteers? Um, um, yes, you had in the UK and elsewhere and stuff like that. Then how did you mobilize yourselves? Because I'm sure you thought about this when everyone, every one of you is actually at home. How did you think about it and how did you uh, put yourselves together? How did you pull your resources together uh, to actually get into uh, now volunteering at this particular period of time? Uh, that's very, a very, very good question. I would say, uh, I would, I would say that uh, for us, helping is, is, is part of something I love. Mm -hmm. It's something that has been nurtured to me by, 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 by my parents and, and also knowing that I'm a Christian, we should help one another. Mm -hmm. So how we came up with this idea was... Uh, we, we realized there was a need because of the global, uh, the global, this global pandemic. Mm. People, much as we have the coronavirus, mm. but the other underlining problems, life has to continue. Mm. People need to eat. Mm. Imagine a border border rider uh, who gets his money from riding daily, mm. and now we have the lockdown, mm. and the motorcycle has been taken from him. Mm. He has, he has, he's, he's a father of two or three. Mm. He has a wife to feed. Mm. How will this person help? his family. Mm. Uh, we, he doesn't want to resort to maybe stealing or, or doing some other things. Mm. That's where we come in. Mm. That's why the, the other people, other organizations like the Red Cross are really doing a very incredible job. Mm. That's why they come in. I've seen people making several donations. So how we thought about this, we're like, how can we help? Mm. But at the same time, observing uh, the presidential directive, that is uh, physical mm. distancing. I like calling it physical distancing rather than social mm rather than social distancing. Mm. So we said, how can we be able to help one another? Mm. How can we help people while observing, uh, phys mm. wh while, while observing physical distancing? So we, s we thought that if we, can be able to, uh, if we can be able to get information from people who are willing to, get us, mm. to give assistance, if, 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 if if we can get people who are willing to give assistance, if we are able to get the information, and also we get the information of people who need assistance, we link them up, and after linking them up, they can be able to actually give assistance to the people. M Maramuzi, yes, um, how is your reach? Um, how many are you? Um, because you're a university student, he's a university student, uh, both of you are from Akai University, you're all doing your master's. I do not know whether this is part of your research. 
um, or it's exactly something that you're doing uh, to also gain and get experience out of it or all the things. How many are you? What's your reach like? And um, uh, where are you? Thank you so much. Uh, apparently, if we can, uh, if I talk about the code of our 2019 2020, mm. in a class we are actually four and we are all involved with only that uh, our colleagues have not come, mm. but we oh, are. Oh, you, you're four students at Macau yeah, University? In our code of y yes, this in program. Code, yes. mm. We are only four and we are all part of this innovation. And we, like you had earlier asked him, how, what moved you, what was the motive behind this? Mm. Uh, if you have been uh, reading through the newspapers, watching news all over across the world, people are experiencing different situations. Mm. And the burden seems to be increasing every day because cases are increasing every day. So it means it is likely that uh, the burden we are facing now is going to increase. And as master's students, we are thinking of how can we help the public and even us included because I'm also following the directives. Mm -hmm. I have to do social distancing and uh, at the same time I have to earn, I have to look for tuition. And uh, there are very many things that have been put on hold and we have to continue living. So we sat down and were like, uh, can we look at how people who are resourceful, because you realize his, uh, uh, his background can, can support someone for, uh, in any case. My background can support any other person. We have counselors, we have uh, doctors, nurses, midwives across. Mm -hmm. So how can we reach to these people and they help the need because we have people who are, let's say, who are diabetic and they have been on dietary regimens. Mm -hmm. They have to be revised every day or day in, day out. So it's very possible that you can call me if uh, my background is medicine and uh, I have vast, various information in regards to diabetic management. We can link up and I give you a plan. So we reached at the point where we are like, can we generate forms? Yes. So we did three forms. And uh, one form is for professionals who are so vigilant on how we can control the hooks, mm. those people who can, who mm. can pretend to be professionals. Mm. We have uh, regulatory bodies across for medical and non-medical. So it's very possible that we can control fraud. Mm. We, we, in, our, in our forms, we created a provision where you have to put uh, your national ID, the NINI, mm. then you have to put uh, the license number and uh, registration number. So in so doing, it is most likely that if you're not a professional, you may not register in that form, and there are must enter options. So, 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 so when somebody registers as a professional, then, yes. then what happens? Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking about myself, if, if Jagan is a medical practitioner, yes. and, and maybe fills that form and gets that, that, I want to see how you are volunteering into helping us in this pandemic. Yes. I, I want to see your voluntarism in, in this thing. Then, then what happens? Because if you have a pool of uh, very authentic uh, practitioners in there, nurses, what did you start at, 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 at BA? Biomedical lab. Biomedical, lab, exactly. Technology. Biomedical uh, technicians or laboratory, whatever you call them, you, you, I do not know who you are. I'm only thinking, w when you have that pool of these experts, then what happens? Jaganda is at home, I cannot move, my car is parked, maybe because I have no sticker or I even do not have a car, my movement is limited, I am supposed to work from within the confines of my house, uh, my, my three-year-old daughter is, is sick or something. I, I'm only thinking, then what happens when, I have, w when you are there? Yeah, exactly. We thought about the same concept. And we now reached at the point of drafting the second form mm. that uh, if you are at home and your daughter is sick, most likely you need either transport means mm. or you need advice from an expert. So we have another form which you're going to fill and we shall capture all your information in our database because we have a, data, a database where we capture all information of the forms that have been filled. Mm. So because we are from different disciplines, mm. we can easily mm -hmm. analyze and see this person requires this person. Mm. And 
we also have the forms of professionals who have already filled and they are willing to provide that service mm. because it is voluntary. Mm. So we shall link you to the person whom we think mm. can be of help. For example, we have categories of people who have stickers. They are allowed to move. Those whose cars can actually move. Yes, they mm. can move. And at some point, they are not working 24 hours. Mm. At some point, their cars are packed, but they have stickers. Mm. So in such a situation, that person can help you out if you are in crisis. Mm. We can connect you to such a person. Reaching out to them. He takes you to the hospital. Mm. Very easy mm. than dying from home. Mm. And actually, I was reading of recent on uh, WHO's information. They are actually encouraging all states mm. to continue with essential services because most likely we may be switched off to the pandemic and we leave essentials, immunization, mm. follow-ups of treatments like uh, these people on chronic drugs, mm. uh, chronic, uh, mm. those Illness who have chronic illnesses. illnesses and they have to take their drugs day in, day out. Mm. You have to do refills. So if you say such entities have closed, you must look for a measure. Mm. You must look for people how they should refill their okay. drugs. So if you don't consider such, most likely the death toll will go high mm. of cases who are actually not COVID, mm. but HIV patients, TB, mm. malaria cases are going to go high because one, people can't access facilities. Okay. There are no means. Mm. So most likely people are going to die from mm. other diseases okay. other than COVID. So we feel it is mm. very paramount that we have people with a good heart mm. who can volunteer and provide service. Of recent, I saw uh, a border border guy from Entebbe who was supplying HIV patients mm. and yeah, he was beach. using uh, Roadmaster. Mm. This the Roadmaster bicycle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And I think it was inconveniencing given to this pandemic now. How can you supply such a big population with a bike? But mm. the way we have came in and gave him a, a motorbike, I think now it's better. Mm. So we need such such people who can help in because government is going to be also overwhelmed if yeah. you are to help everyone, everyone. Okay. And yet we have people who, who, who seemingly have an extra mm. value they can add to these needy people. Y yes, you want to add, add, add on something that you're saying? Uh, yes, mm. um, I want to add on what my colleague said. Mm. Imagine, uh, uh, apparently, we have the social distancing. Like I said, I like calling it physical distancing. Mm. So most likely, some people are going to be in isolation. And um, WHO and CDC recently had a communication regarding uh, mental health. Mm. Uh, we, there is an anticipation that there are going to be an increased rate of mental health issues. Even after the, the COVID-19? Yeah. After the COVID, because of... Uh, Economic, economic, economic related uh, mm. uh, issues. And other stress related issues, yes. <laughs> exactly. Mm. But also, if, if you've been in confinement, if you've been in isolation, like say uh, the lockdown caught you, the lockdown caught you at home, mm. the lockdown caught you and you're alone at home, uh, if, if you imagine such a situation, at most cases you will, you will be isolated, you will find some issues that, like mental issues. Mm. So it needs. A counselor. Mm. Sometimes uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to say this one, but you you will find that maybe you have a spouse. You've been having some issues, mm. but now this lockdown has got the, yes, together. has confined <laughs> the two of you together. You, you were running away from your wife in the morning, exactly, uh, and you know separate from her for some time. Exactly, come back in the evening when she's tired, when you're so tired. You and now you are in the same house looking at each other every other morning. <laughs> exactly. Mm. So it's it's really a very stressful situation. And you realize that there could be other issues like domestic violence. There could be other issues like uh, just stress. And you know stress can really be a disaster. That's why counselors come in. We have a good number of people who have actually registered their counselors. Mm -hmm. And they could help. They could remotely help you, maybe give you a call. Nowadays we have, uh, we have WhatsApp, we have uh, Zoom, people, for, people who are... Mm -hmm. who are who are well connected you can use zoom you can use even skype uh, maybe the issue would be about data and uh, and maybe airtime or something but we're trying to find ways of maybe you could contact mtn or airtel and find ways of 
maybe trying to leverage on some of these volunteers whether they can be able to, to give them some kind of uh, uh, help uh, in any way they can. But uh, that's, a, that's a situation where we, we are in, mm -hmm. where I, there are issues like mental health, people don't have food. When you don't have food, uh, the next thing is you're going to become stressed. Mm -hmm. Your wife is telling you, honey, we need food. Mm -hmm. And then y the next thing you're seeing, your child is crying. And then before you know it, they ha he has malaria. But some of these things, maybe a medical doctor, a medical practitioner could remotely help you. Mm -hmm. Maybe by just a phone call, okay, what can I do in this kind of a situation? Mm -hmm. There are issues of food rationing. Nutritionists mm -hmm. can help. Mm -hmm. There are people who are nutritionists. Uh, actually, one of our colleagues, Caroline. Caroline, a very, very incredible friend of mine, a very good friend of mine. She's a nutritionist. Also and, in Vasa student? Uh, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's, she's very, very willing to, to help. She has been developing some ways of uh, rationing food because it's going to be an issue if this lockdown, for example, uh, goes f longer than, than, than this. Than we think. Yes, than we think. So some of those things... So people everyone need to even know what to eat and what not to eat because we worry that people come out of this thing when some are even actually obese. Um, either some shall have been malnutritioned and, 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 and a number of things. So, so women need to know how to eat and how to manage. Because somebody yes. may say, well, we are locked down. I bought some uh, uh, posha in the house and I bought some rice in the house. So it is posha and beans every day, rice and beans every day, posha and beans every day, rice and beans every day, until the lockdown ends uh, yeah. and we do not know when. So I think that will also uh, be a problem. Uh, Dan, you want exactly. to add something on that? Uh, <laughs> when you talk, you about, about, when you talk yeah. about nutrition, uh, I remember that we may experience a rise in malnutrition cases because... You as the nurses are already worried now. <laughs> that the problem is coming ahead of yes. Most likely we shall get cases of malnutrition or overnutrition because people are eating. And uh, if they are eating and they are not exercising, they are going to have huge rise in, uh, in their body weights. And if they are at home, and they don't have what to eat, most likely they are going to be malnutrition mm. and nourished. Mm. So it's also a concept we need to look through the high chances that we may get it. And there is also when you're talking of social stress and need of cancerous, there is a concept of downsizing staffs, especially in private sectors now, because the burden looks to be huge and uh, it's not yet to end. So they are considering downsizing staffs. So in doing that, most likely you're terminating my contract. <coughs> and by virtue of how I've been living, I know at the end of the month I have my 300 mm. from my employer. So if you terminate me and I've been taking care of four people, most likely the burden is, is worse than how we're anticipating it. So downsizing is also part of the burden. So that's where we need cancer as talk to these people. Mm if they are there to, to prepare them and they are willing to volunteer mm. i think it is paramount that they should register what, what challenges us. are you finding as a first of all you are university students i'm i'm, I'm very sure that uh, you do not have a resource envelope that is there too you <laughs> talk about voluntarism yes. uh, you're just coming out as volunteers because you've looked at this thing as, as experts of course as as or experts in the making because when you look at the health um, attachments to this thing and what will come uh, thereafter is uh, you, you look at the future, for example, all these things that you're telling us. Uh, and I know that you are talk about your talk as volunteers, no resource envelope, no, uh, no budget, uh, and of course, all the things. So, uh, apart from that constraint, what other challenges are you finding? Um, you're, you're mobilizing professionals, you talk about counselors, you talk about medical doctors, and all the things. What other challenges are you finding uh, to, to get into them? Uh, well, Sometimes I like looking at, looking at challenges as an opportunity. Mm. Uh, yes, we are experiencing some challenges, and uh, maybe just to, to, to bring to perspective what you're saying is, uh, uh, let's look at our country, Uganda, and let's look at the Minister of Health. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we have had countries which have a very good healthcare system. Mm. Uh, for example, USA. USA, yesterday by yesterday, I think they have a, over 21,000 people who are dead. Mm. Italy, Italy has over 19. 19,000, yes, UK, UK has over 10,000. 10, Close to 11,000. But those people have a very strong healthcare system. Italy, Germany, France, yeah. everywhere. Yes, when I talk about the healthcare system, I'm, I'm meaning uh, governance. There is government will, finance, the, the health 
is well funded. I'm talking about uh, service delivery. They have very good service delivery. They really have very strong healthcare system. But despite of that, still they're having challenges. Mm -hmm. Now, reflecting on that, let's look at Uganda. Uganda doesn't, yes, our healthcare system is not really that good, but one lesson we can learn is despite the few resources that you can you have if you optimize them very well and i want to say dr dr chen the minister of health has done an incredible job with the leadership leadership of the president mm -hmm. they have really done a very good job so you can optimize the few resources you have to meet the need that you that is arising now bringing that idea to our volunteering mm -hmm. uh when we started about this, we thought, what do we have? One of our, uh, we, we, we have a website for one of our companies, Graphite Holdings. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we got in touch with our IT specialist and we asked him, ah, gentlemen, what, what can you do for us? He said, okay, I can be able to do this for you, physical distancing. Mm -hmm. We did all this remotely and was able to, to incorporate w our ideas and a little bit remove certain parts of the website and incorporate the assistance bit of it. Mm -hmm. So with that, and then, he, he was able to voluntary, vo volunteer, voluntarily, he was mm -hmm. able to make those changes and update the website. And then come another challenge we're facing is how do you, how do you help someone who, is, who doesn't have a smartphone? Mm -hmm. Because you realize that much as our idea looks good, but it requires somebody to be able to access these forms, mm -hmm. to be able to access this information. Actually, a good friend of mine, Jackie Teta, she raised this concern when we we're trying out, trying out these forms. So how do you help that person? So when we sat as a team, we said, this is really a challenging one. So we thought, okay, if it, within the neighborhood of people who, have, who don't have phones, who don't have a smartphone, there should be at least one or two people who have smartphones. And if they can be able to hear this message out there, if you're in a congregation of people who don't have smartphones, but they need assistance, mm -hmm. in our forms, we incorporated a slot of request assistance for a neighbor. So in that way, you request for an assistance for your neighbor. And when that assistance comes, it could be maybe food, it could be monetarily, it could be maybe just they, they need a counselor to talk to. When that assistance, you deliver it to them. Now we are counting on the goodwill of that person who is requesting an assistance. Because by the time you request for an assistance for your neighbor, then you have a goodwill. Right. In other words, you are rallying all of us to be volunteers uh, and not for only the health experts that... Um I can also volunteer by possibly giving food to somebody. Yes, you can. Um, uh, giving medicine to somebody or giving uh, sharing soap yes, or, yes. Or, or water to somebody. It, it yes. doesn't have to only be a health problem no, or a medical that, issue. Not at all. Uh, exactly, exactly. What you're saying is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Because all of us, we call it mutual help. Mm -hmm. Mutual help. All of us can help some. It's, it's not how much you have. Mm -hmm. It's not the skill you have. It's that willingness you have to give even the little you have. Because these are dark days. These are tough days for the human race. Mm. But if we join up together, if we work together, if we help each other, mm. we can come out of this strong, bold, and ready to face the, the the, Muramuzi, uh, 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 emphasize the point of uh, remote assistance, yes. uh, that, that kind of remote assistance. I, I need to know how, how somebody can actually be helped adequately, yet remotely. So to emphasize on that same point is that socially we are different mm -hmm. and economically we are different. Uh, I may not brag, but I think I can eat breakfast, lunch, supper. Mm -hmm. But there is someone who cannot afford mm -hmm. three meals or he can afford one. Mm -hmm. And probably is my neighbor. Mm -hmm. But because, you know, we act given to what you know, there is some a concept where you, you can't do what you don't know. And probably you have the power to do it and you have the resources to do it. But you feel like maybe it's not my, my responsibility to contribute. But we are trying to tell the public that uh, there is a crisis. Some are not seeing it and others have already faced it. So if you can link, maybe I think we use the linkage also. If you can link me to Mr. Patrick who owns uh, a, a grocery or a store mm. and you say, please help this person with 10 kilograms of portion. Mm. 
it would be really a good good initiative however social distancing is also a concept on its own so we need someone who can deliver because you may get the item but you can't get it on it, hold. Because you see, when it gets now to again now, um, uh, this kind of assistance, we, we have a task force. Uh, yes. The, the Nduguruguna task force. Oh, that, excellent. That, that Honorable Mary Carol mm. uh, uh, Won't Patrick say, I have 10 kilos of uh, maize flour that I can give out to um, Ramuzi, but then yet I need to cut it and take it OPM. Uh, and, and, well, that will be my contribution to them. Then they'll know who to give it to. I don't know what th whether that's what you're talking about, but then I'm also seeing another concept here of uh, you stay in, in some village in Vulenga, and, and um, somewhere in the neighborhood around Vulenga is where somebody needs help. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, that, that I don't have to carry my ration from Vulenga to maybe OPM here, then again they fed it back. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yes, yes, that is very true because uh, we, are, we are looking at your neighborhood. Y you know, the, the Bible says you should help your neighbor, right? Mm. Uh, we're looking at your immediate neighborhood because sometimes by the time this resource comes from the OPM's mm. office and it's delivered to you, by the time it reaches you, it might be it might be late a little. <laughs> but if there is someone within your neighborhood, because in our forms we actually capture your location. Mm. So how we do? We we match. We match people based on those their locality. You link them. Yes, yes. we link them. Mm. So we check. Okay. Uh, Patrick needs assistance. Where does Patrick stay? He stays maybe in Imperial. Is there somebody within Imperial who says he can offer food? Mm -hmm. So we link that person to that, uh, to that other person who needs help. Uh, although uh, at this rate we are not, uh, we were trying a little bit to, to distance, to distance ourselves from monetarily <laughs> related, mm -hmm. like receiving cash. Mm -hmm. We want, if you, if you want to give assistance, monetarily assistance, because mm -hmm. you can't. We want you to be able to deliver to this person, the need. Mm. to the person who needs it. Mm. We, we will give you a contact of mm. the person who needs assistance. Mm. Be because with or without a smartphone, at least money can be received. Yes, it can. Exactly. On, on any type of phone, <laughs> money does not receive it. Money does not <laughs> segregate which phone to go to. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So, so we want you to be able to directly know that, okay, they call it knowing where you're putting your money. Mm. In Uganda, mm. they said take a cent all over. Whatever. Mm. Yes. So we want you to be able to, to know that, okay, I helped 10 people, and these are the people I helped. So if you, if you say I have a donation of maybe 100,000, I want to give 10,000, 10, 10, you can say, okay, we can give you 10 contacts. You send that money to them. Mm. We don't want to receive the money, and, uh, but in case maybe you insist, maybe we can, and then mm. maybe later we can share with you the people we deliver the money to. But we want you to be able to make that impact yourself mm. and help and we encourage more help in your neighborhood mm. and sometimes people say ah, but for me I, patrick i don't have i don't have uh, i don't have anything sometimes let's let's look at data because actually we received uh, some people who who needed assistance of of mm. data like mm. data sometimes you buy you buy a bundle a daily bundle uh, of mm. one gb for example mm. and it's about to expire even but you can add somebody on to Gavana if you're in Airtel, mm. right? You add one person, that person will be happy for those one, two, three hours. There is something you can do to help your neighbor. Okay. Uh, don't look at it like... Physical, uh, physical. Uh, like really physical, like a lot. No, it doesn't matter. You can help someone out there. Mm. So if, if, if you're looking at yourself and you're saying, uh, really, I can't help. No, there is something you can do to help the community. And that's what we're encouraging. Mm. You may not help using even our forms, right? Uh, because actually, uh, one friend of mine told me that, ah, Patrick, I helped actually my neighbor. I, I didn't use your forms, but I realized that I could actually help my immediate neighbor with food. Mm. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you sign into our forms, great perfect incredible mm. but even if you don't sign into the forms mm. and if you do not subscribe to the forms mm. you can still help step up and help your neighbor how much money do i have to pay to subscribe to your forms or to access your phones do, do i pay money to get your forms be able to help somebody or what happens uh this is really voluntary work and we we know that this is uh, a challenge we almost entire group never expected mm. so most likely we have financial burden as of today mm. everyone wants to keep what he has because you're not sure what tomorrow brings maybe 
you don't know you'll be able to go back and get more money. May, may, the president may even, ex still. Yeah, he may, he may even extend the, 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 the lockdown. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mean on what you have. You don't, want, you don't want to just spend it now. So we are, we are entirely free. Subscribing is free. And uh, I think at a later, uh, later time we shall, maybe if we can project the, the website. Uh, maybe after COVID and all these things, then it will become some commercial bit because nobody would want to do a service for, even when you're volunteering, I think that's okay. But, but I think what you're doing now is, uh, it, it's voluntary. It's really and, during and it's this lockdown and uh, during this pandemic, if uh, at a later a time we revise and we say, okay, support someone who is transport to deliver a service. If I'm coming to review your your dad, your mom, who is sick, maybe you may support me with transport. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, as some students, I'm a university student, you're doing your master's, and uh, tomorrow you'll be practicing and you'll be here, you'll be the experts actually to be consulted from, or even actually uh, by taking charge over many of the things. Um, uh, what, what do you see as the future of our health systems having gone through this period of time, and uh, what has actually hit us and, and, and the rest of the world? Uh, what would you think um, should be the future of our health systems now as um, uh, science students? I think at this point we need to prioritize and see where should we invest resources and uh, we, we shouldn't neglect any other facility or any other sector but we need to prioritize like uh, uh, what uh, the president normally says people must eat and Harris and Agriculture Ministry, I think they are so related that if one is not working, probably the other is not working. You can't go to your farm when you're sick, and uh, you have to provide food for people to be well. Mm. So the health sector in Uganda, the, the good thing is that our response to emergencies, I think, in the region, we, have, we are better, mm. given that when you see the trend of the COVID cases, and uh, the tracking system that is on and uh, the management approach we discharged of recent cases from Lago. Mm. I think we are not, we are not, we are not bad mm. and if we prioritize and we see how to continue providing essential services, immunization, we make sure that people are attending antenatal services we respond to emergencies. I think we, we may not experience a huge burden, but we must be prepared for any eventuality. Where do you see our health sector um, in the coming days after the COVID-19 uh, as a health student? Uh, well, I would want to borrow uh, the concept uh, my professor told me, Professor Peter Waswa. He said that health systems are complex. In, in nature, but that the, the building blocks of a healthcare system, mm -hmm. finance, government, governance, uh, service delivery, among others. Uh, one thing that we can learn from this is governance, uh, finance, the, the, other, the other building blocks, but they're really very fundamental. Uh, I want you to look at a situation whereby uh, the government never had uh, that will to take an, uh, to take steps like putting the lockdown in edo in order to mitigate this pandemic would have a disaster in our country but because of the good governance because of the because because of the good governance of our country he, the president was able to make the tough call it was a tough call i call it it was a tough call because the lockdown has consequences that we named earlier but uh, because of the good governance, the president was able to make the right decision. So the building blocks, talk about finance, tracking all these, all, all the people, the contact people who, who, had, uh, who could have gotten in contact with somebody of coronavirus is a very tedious but also resource-demanding process. So I, I look at our healthcare system in the way that if we if we borrow some of the things we have learned from this corona mm -hmm. uh, good governance finance we can actually move forward a lot especially uh, by the way just just to commend again our healthcare system despite of the resources uh, the WHO recently actually commended the work Uganda Uganda is doing mm -hmm. uh, case fine I mean case tracking so it, it means much as we are resource constrained, mm. uh, it's a plus for us on how we have handled this outbreak. Uh, 
and this pandemic. And at the same time, it's also a plus for Macquarie University because I would say uh, uh, Dr. Chen is a, is a product of, of <laughs> Macquarie University. And looking at how we have been handling uh, Ebola mm -hmm. in Uganda and the impact we had in West Africa. West Africa was mm. was uh, a ver was a serious mm. was in serious crisis. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But when our experts from Uganda went to, to West mm. Africa, they did an incredible job. Mm. So what we can learn is, despite the resources that we have that are limited, mm. we can actually okay. move forward a lot. How do people access you finally? In, in just one minute, if somebody wants to get to you, how do they find you? Where do they get you? And how do they actually get uh, to access you? As, 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 as we get out of here? I think, uh, I don't know if we could at some point project our website for the purpose. Just tell it to the people, don't project it. Because it's uh, graphite holding limited. Uh, yeah, yeah you, you could check our, you could check on the website, uh, it is graphite ltd www.graphiteltd yes, www uh, slash coronavirus do, uh, dot assistance. So you can go to that website and you'll be able to see the three links. If you're a professional, you can volunteer as a professional. If you're just a general volunteer, you can also do that. But also, if you need assistance, you can click on that. But mm -hmm. also, you can contact us. Mm -hmm. uh, we we were well, currently utilizing because we do not want also uh, calls to flood on our personal life. We're using the company contacts that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, I can read it to you, the contacts. It's zero seven zero. Zero two zero zero nine zero zero six five nine uh and zero three nine three two four three two eight eight. But also you can you can uh, get us on Twitter. Uh my my handle is Patrick Ipola at Patrick Ipola or you can you can uh, you can also use a hashtag hash mutual help. UG. We're using that, that hashtag because we want to be able to reach out to very many people. Okay. It is hash Misho help UG. Okay, well, I thank you so much. And it's just a two minutes to the hour of 10 o'clock. I want to thank you, Mr. Uh, Patrick Ipola, uh, Macquarie University uh, Masters of Science uh, Services. Uh, yes, uh, Health Services Research, research yes, in yes. Bio, Biotechnology. Uh, that, that was my bachelor's program, Biomedical Lab Technology. Oh, okay, okay. So, so you in, in, in science research, and yes. that's what you're doing at your, at, at your master's. Yes. Same to uh, my, my, my nurse gentleman here, Maramuzi. But I thank you so much. These are students from Makai University, and you see what this thing has actually done to us is uh, it has managed to pull out uh, the innovativeness that is within us to see where it gets. Now, just yesterday, or a few days ago, in Kenya, in the University of uh, Kenyatta, uh, the students there have also now uh, pioneered on uh, their prototype of uh, the ventilator. They properly see how it comes. And because now this is where the world is, I'm only thinking because remember, uh, the cases in Kenya are also rising and uh, the, um, uh, 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 sh very few cases shy of from 200, uh, but also trying to manage the pandemic there and because they are neighbors. So we cannot celebrate anything uh, bad when it happens to Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, uh, South Sudan, Tanzania, and everywhere. We all think we need to have a, a, a very cohesive region where we all fight this pandemic and actually come out of it uh, victorious and uh, very successful. I want to thank you, uh, gentlemen, for being with us in Studio Zia, and of course to all our viewers out there, we want to thank you so much. Uh, that is where we are. Uganda got a new case uh, yesterday, but we also thank God for uh, those that are recovering. And just today, uh, the ministry is promising us another about 15 who shall also be uh, discharged. And uh, if you know them, we ask and uh, just beseech you uh, that please reintegrate them, receive them, not as criminals, not as wrongdoers, not as sinners, not as lepers, not as uh, uh, persona non grata. Uh, you just receive them and, and actually I thank God that these are uh, heroes. Having seen how many people globally are actually dying. Now, if your relatives or community members return and they are now free of COVID, we need to thank God for that. Thank you so much. My name is Jagger Nasema Kola Zixoka. We'll talk again another time. Wish you the best. Stay home, stay safe, wash our hands, and let's keep the fight going on. Good morning.
The Ministry of Health informs the general public that cases of coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, have been confirmed in Uganda. The Ministry reassures all people in Uganda that there is no need to panic as all measures are in place to prevent the spread of the virus. We need all your collective efforts to ensure that coronavirus does not spread in our homes and communities. The coronavirus symptoms include fever, cough, sore throat, sneezing, difficulty in breathing, and body weakness. Coronavirus is spread from human to human when an infected person sneeze or cough droplets come into contact with others. It can also be spread when a person touches a contaminated surface, then touches their eyes, nose, and mouth. To prevent coronavirus from spreading further, please take the following measures. Avoid close contact with persons who show flu-like symptoms. Avoid handshaking and hugging at all times. Keep a distance of at least 2 meters from the next person. Cover your mouth and nose when sneezing or coughing with a tissue, handkerchief or bent elbow. Regularly wash your hands with soap and running water or alcohol-based rub such as hand sanitizer. Do not spit in public. Find a secluded place like a toilet or pit latrine in which to spit. Cook meat and eggs thoroughly before eating. Avoid unprotected contact with live wild animals. For further information, please call the Minister of Health toll-free numbers on 0800-100-066 or 0800-203033 or 919 or send a free SMS to you report on 8500. This message is from the Minister of Health with support from World Health Organization and UNICEF.